Computer Archaeology. Hello. Well, I got a Commodore 64 here, and I got a MIDI keyboard over here. And uh, MIDI came out roughly 1982, 1983, and uh, the Commodore 64 basically came out in 1982. So it precedes MIDI by you know a few months, about a year or so. However, of course, the nice thing about computers uh, is that you can make carts, and they basically made uh, some MIDI interfaces uh, that, that would just fit in there like a regular cartridge uh, would. When you uh, basically, uh, that's how you used to get applications onto um, software back in the day. Now, there's also the tape deck I have here, the Commodore tape deck that's there. Of course, some of y'all probably seen that a great deal. And then, um, of course, there's, there's floppy drives. Basically, I'm going to show you a way that you could use some software to use the Commodore 64 as a synthesizer. So I'm going to use MIDI to play the notes, but the sounds are coming from the SID chip in here. And basically, there's three, uh, three voices of that chip. Uh, some people can uh, have soldered on another one to get six. And I think I've seen some folks playing around and even get like nine voices, potentially. Um, Last year, I basically recorded a CD uh, with a analog synthesizer from 1981 range. Uh, this is 1982 range, this computer here, and of course it was very popular even into the 90s. Uh, I'm going to say it's way easier to make music off of this thing, off of this Commodore 64, because I have an interface that I can look at, and I can go back and put settings and uh, on the synthesizer, basically because it's voltage control, every time I plug the patch in, I would never get it exactly the same again. So that was that was really interesting. So let me just fire this up a little bit. Um, I got the two things that are not, are not original. One, of course, is a flat screen TV. It's just a little bit lighter for me to carry around. Another one is uh, this is a flop. This is the floppy disk. It's actually using an SD card. Um, Take out the SD card there so you can see it. You've seen plenty of SD cards in your life, I'm sure. Uh, finding a working um, floppy drive and finding working five and a quarter floppy disk are just cost prohibitive in a lot of ways. Uh, in Germany and Europe, the Commodore 64 still has a really big fan base. So uh, they basically made this device here that, that mimics a, uh, a, a floppy drive. So that and the TV are basically the two things that aren't the completely um, o o official with it. So I'm going to fire up the Commodore 64. I got a MIDI interface back here, got MIDI cables there going to the keyboard. And so here it is, it pops up. And so what we've got to do is basically load the software. And so I'm going to load the software and type in load and then parentheses and then the name of the software that I'm trying to load in this case here is that comma 8 means read the floppy drive and then I hit return then I type in run and then I hit return and it's loading this particular uh, software that's, that's talking to the floppy disk so this is a uh, 2 gig card which probably could hold every piece of software that ever came out for the Commodore 64 um, but we're going to be using some MIDI applications, and these are what, these are ones. If you do actually have a Commodore 64, or if you're into emulation, you can actually uh, use this software um, on your own computer as well. However, there is something about using this on a real synthesis on a real red box Commodore 64. It's just something uh, about that that just really uh, is amazing to me. So the first one I'm going to use is a, what they call SynthCart 2, and so I'm going to load it up. I've got my little notes right here, um, so I can make sure I can kind of say everything. So basically the SynthCart, um, it does use MIDI, and it is a standalone analog synthesizer, and you can use key command interface, um, so you can use it for live performance. So there are folks that actually take this out there. And it's, and it's compatible with a lot of different interfaces. So you can see right there, I am actually playing the MIDI keyboard. Now, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you could just go and play it, and play it that way.
So I'm coming out of the TV, uh, which I'm sure you could have been, you, you could have done back in the back in the days as, as well. I have here uh, a sound design, and I believe this is like a Radio Shack type model, I believe, and it's like a radio cassette. So I can go hit record on that, and basically, I probably would have used an eight track, I mean, a four track cassette recorder to do multi track. Um, uh, this particular one here. But I, I can go through here and pick different sounds. And you can go through there and change things like the attack, the release. something uh, you can hit um, return and it tells you the keys what you need to do and I can just imagine if, you, if, you, if I would have had this back in the early 80s this particular software and a MIDI interface you could have just done some insane cool stuff so let's say I wanted to record well I hit record and play for those that never used a tape deck before and So there it is, it's, it's being recorded. I'm on this like kind of die out, and then I'll, I'll hit stop, <laughs> and uh, we'll rewind it and uh, see how it actually sounds playing back. And uh, for those, there's a cassette if you haven't had that before. The rewind is kind of a little flaky, so what I'm doing, what we used to do back in the day when the rewind broke, turn around and do fast forward. and. Uh, that would work. And I'll say one thing, cassettes kind of got a bad rap. You can get some quality cassettes. They cost a lot of money and you get quality cassette recorders. They cost a lot of money. Just like a record player that really sounds good could be a $12,000 record with, you know, with a $3,000, $4,000 needle. Uh, so like the, 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 record, the record players you get for $50, it's going to sound like a $50 uh, that. So let's see if it actually will play back. So, that's how we would have recorded electronic music back in the 80s on cassette. And honestly, this, this here is probably not that good of an example of a, of a quality um, cassette deck back in the day. But I wanted to go completely retro on everything that I could go retro on. So th this one particular program is just a really good program. And you can go through there and manipulate a lot of different things with it. Uh, I'm on a little bit of... Uh, Another program that I like a lot as well, and I have to do the same thing, and basically, look how fast it boots. And just type it in there, the command that you need to. And you gotta make sure you type everything right. There's no spell check. And uh, uh, one thing that's kind of curious, if you actually had a tape recorder, uh, you had like a, a fast loader, it, it oftentimes would beat of the floppy drive back then, so um, I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck with this as well. I'm sure this is this is about as fast as you could go with uh, your floppy with your floppy drive reading. So it's loading right now. Oh, it's taking a while to load. Okay, there it is. So I'll come down to my folder, and another one that I like a lot is uh, Station um, 64, and this one's another. Let me get my notes out. Station 64, and uh, another, it's a, it's a live player via MIDI. Uh, three voices polyphony, oscillator control via MIDI, uh, advanced slide and pitch, and um, so it uses various MIDI interfaces as well, which they, they were, unlike today where things are kind of standardized back then, 
Um, I got two mini interfaces for the 64. This one is not as uh, universal for these apps as this one that I have currently in here. This, um, this particular one here. So let's see if I can get it going. All right. And then there, there it is there. And you see that I got controls over uh, the ASDR, you know, tuning, um, wave controls, all these different things. And if I go up and down, I can pick different sounds. Well, you know, you love that one. That one sounds really good. F2, it will help me figure out what I what I can do with various things. So if I want to do a little bit of wave, I can do different waves. And I pick the, there's three oscillators in there, so I can do different, different waveforms for those. So that's, a, that's another one that works really well. And just for fun, I'll show you one, one other one uh, that pops up as well. Uh, back here I have a switch between on and off, and, and the first time I can leave it on on for MIDI, the next time after that I gotta turn it off or else it won't load up. So I don't know exactly why it does that, but it took me a half a second to kind of figure that out. And uh, I go back to my old troubleshooting days. If something doesn't work, unplug it unplug everything you can until you get something that actually works. So, and this has been really, uh, the last two months playing around with this Commodore 64 has been really fun and I've got a CD that's going to come out. Uh, it may be already out but by, by the time I have this video um, released. But um, I've used all of these different programs to kind of you come up and use this as a sound module, as a synthesizer itself. And, uh, and I really basically call this software archaeology is seeing what I can do uh, to make this work. This is a program called Retroaski, if, I can, if I'm pronouncing it right. And uh, this one here is, let's see, I don't think I got as much. This is a two oscillator, a monophonic synth. So, and there it is. And I'm not sure, does it work with many? I don't think it works with, well, let me see. Maybe it does work with many. But I know it, it works with a keyboard. I tried this one on, a, on an emulator and it works. And if you want to let's see, change the patch. So it's really kind of fun that you actually have. Uh, applications that you can go and make music with and using them basically as a sound module as a synthesizer. So I hope this kind of helps out a little bit for folks that are into retro music, retro computers and you know there, there's an old rule that basically says that a, a one bit computer can do anything a bazillion bit computer does just a lot slower. And this here being 64k of RAM basically you know one megahertz processor basically um, you can do a lot of really cool things with it you if, if, if I only could if I only had to use this to score films I could do it it would be harder but I could do it I definitely have to have some type of external eight track or four track uh, controller uh, something to, to do this with uh, but it's been really fun this summer to go through here and make a, a CD with this technology here this 35 year old technology now and um, really amazing really amazing well thanks for watching and I hope that I have spurred your interest a little bit in going out there and trying some of these apps out 
and, and go out there and make some retro type music. And, and there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this, um, these old computers. And if you, if you can't get a hold of these computers, fortunately there's emulators out there that you can get a hold of. As always, rock and roll. And of course, it does compute. Yeah. <laughs>